the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. No. 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 Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you so very much, everyone, for being here today. I am so very grateful. I heard cell phones ringing twice, and I asked you at the beginning to please turn off your cell phones. So you could please do me a favor and turn them off because it's very distracting. So silence your cell phones, please. Um, I know it's hard to do that, but please <laughs> silence the cell phones because it's very distracting. Babies don't bother me. They can cry all they want. They can run around. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, that makes me very happy when there are babies in church. But the cell phones are very distracting. So thank you so very much for silencing your cell phones and for taking the time to be here today when we, in a special way, this whole weekend celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, Our Lady of Guadalupe is a very, very special image in our Catholic faith. I'm, I have to, I have to turn it around so that you could see it. There it is. This is my back, so I put my back on my front now so that you could see it. I have the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe right here. And it is a very, very special image. Why? It is the only image in the entire Catholic faith that comes directly from heaven. It's like having a selfie from heaven. <laughs> it's like a selfie from heaven. That's how special Our Lady of Guadalupe is. Over 500 years ago, the indigenous man Juan Diego, who was feeling dejected, down, he was persecuted, of course, by the 
Spanish who conquered the New World, as they called it, and subjected the indigenous people to much abuse and exploitation. And Juan Diego hears from the Virgin Mary who appeared to him, am I not here? I who am your mother. I am your mother, she said. You are not alone, Juan Diego. I'm your mama. And she appeared to him in December in the midst of roses, which is the sign of the great miraculous apparition because in December there are no roses in Mexico City. And as proof, because the bishop would not believe him, Juan Diego opened his cloak, so he had something like this, and when he opened it, because she gave him the instructions, the roses fell out and the bishop believed. And there have been studies done on the image, scientific studies, and it's normally, it's made out of cactus, and it takes just a few years for the material, the cactus material to be ruined, and it has lasted for more than 500 years, unruined. Mm -hmm. The miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, an indigenous woman, she did not appear like, she did not appear like a Spanish woman or a white woman, she appeared indigenous to give dignity back to the indigenous people at the time and to let them know that they were not alone, that God was with them and that everything was going to be okay. Am I not here? I, who am your mother. You have a mother, Juan Diego, and that is something for each and every one of us to take in because the love of a mother is so good that even God wanted to try that love. God had a mother too. God didn't have to have a mom, a mom, a mama, but God does, Mary. And she is our mother too. He gave her to us at the cross. He said, Behold your mother, and behold your son. That disciple there at the foot of the cross represents each and every one of us who have taken Mary as our mother. And that is so important in our life because so often we feel like we don't have a mother. When you have a mother, you know that everything is going to be okay. Who is it that comforted you? you know, the arms of your mother. The love of a mother is so great that even God wanted to try that love. And God wants you to experience that love today as we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I, my entire childhood, spent waiting for my mother because my mother left Poland when I was a small little kid and she came to the United States. And so I spent my entire childhood waiting for my mom to come back. There were no phones. I couldn't call her. There was no FaceTime. Nothing like that. In my entire town in Poland, there was only one phone in the entire town. And it was the, higher, the highest communist official in the town that had a phone. So I could not call my mom for years. I had no contact with her. And people wanted to comfort me in all sorts of ways. When my mom left, it was the most horrible time in my life because, of course, a child needs their mother. And people would try to comfort me all the time, trying to tell me, but your mom is going to send you all these toys from the United States and she's going to send you candy and chocolates and you're going to have Legos and all these things. And I didn't want any toys or candy or chocolates. I wanted my mother. 
I wanted my mom. And so my mom left in a car that took her to the train station that then took her to Warsaw where she flew to the United States. And it's kind of up in a hill because I lived in the southwest section of Poland, which is very hilly. There's a lot of mountains there. It's Lower Silesia. And so the car that took my mom away went up the hill. And so I spent my entire childhood waiting at the bottom of the hill for my mom to come back, looking up there waiting for her to come back. And one day, this young man, who later became my best friend, and he is my very good friend to this very day, his name is Yashu, or John, or Juanito, if you want it. <laughs> he came and he joined me there at the bottom of the hill. And I asked him, why are you here with me? And you see, because his mother, the mom of eight children, died very suddenly. And they took her in a coffin, in a horse-drawn carriage, up the hill to the cemetery where she was buried. But it was winter, so kids could not go to the cemetery. And so he joined me there at the bottom of the hill. And I asked him, why are you here? And he says, I'm waiting for my mom to come back. He too was waiting for his mom to come back down the hill from the cemetery. Because they took her up. And he was just waiting there with me. And from that day forward, we waited together for our mothers to come back. And one day he didn't show up. And at school I asked him, why didn't you show up today? Why didn't you come and wait with me today? Because we did that every single day. That was my experience in my childhood. Why didn't you show up today? And he says, because my mom has shown up. My mom has shown up. My mom has shown up, he says. My mom has come back. And so I asked him, what do you mean your mom has come back? Well, she appeared to me in a dream. She appeared to me in a dream. back to him in a dream and she told him that he didn't have to wait anymore that she was with him always and that he didn't have to wait anymore my mom eventually came back and took me with her to the United States she came back too for me as Our Lady of Guadalupe came back for Juan Diego. Let that be your experience today, that your mother has come back for you. You're not without a mother. You have a mother. And when you have a mother, you feel like everything is going to be okay. That's the experience in our life. You know, 
As wonderful as it was to have my mom come back from me and take me to the United States, I had to leave my grandmother in Poland, who became my mom when my mom left. My grandmother raised me in Poland. And she became like my mother. And then I had to leave her and come here to the United States. So that cycle was repeated because that's how our life is. One thing is arranged in our life. Our mom comes back and then our mom leaves. It's the experience of life. Just when you think everything is going great, then something else happens. And that's why we celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe every single year. To be reminded that whatever experience of being without a mother, that, that means you know, being without hope, being without the consolation that you need, you may experience that your mom is waiting to come back. So what is it in your own life? What am I getting at in this sermon? You know, I like to bring it all because I know you all need some good news here. There's a lot of bad news around. You need some good news that I know you can use in your life. What is the good news? That whatever you are waiting for at the bottom of the hill, it's coming. Huh? Christmas is around the corner. It's Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's all going to be okay in your life. What is it that you're waiting for in your own life? Who is the mama that you're waiting for? Is it a new job? Is it better health? Is it for the cancer to be over? Is it your marital problem to be over? Is it something with your children to be over? Uh, everybody's got issues. You know, our mama comes back and then something else happens. Like my mom came back and brought me to the United States, but I have to leave my grandmother. Our life is like that. There's a dichotomy in us. It's never 100% perfect because there's no perfect human beings. There's just human beings, not perfect beings. It's never going to be 100% okay. In other words, it's okay not to be okay, but to know that with God in your life, you will be okay always 100% of the time. You will make it okay. Juan Diego made it, I made it, and you're going to make it too. Because your mama's coming. Yo mama is here. That's my southern accent for you. Yo mama. You didn't know that I was from the south of Poland. I am. I'm from the southwest of Poland. Yo mama is here. And there's nothing better like Our Lady of Guadalupe. I've got these nice statues for all of you. <laughs> Let me do some promotion here. Okay. You see this statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe? Yeah. Many of you, you know, you think that this is something for Mexicans. It's not. It's for everybody. She appeared in the Americas. And last time I checked, Mexico was in North America. Huh? And so are we. We're in North America. She's not just for Mexicans. She's for everybody. Huh? I'm from Poland. And Our Lady of Guadalupe is all over Poland. Everywhere. Huh? In fact... Pope John Paul II, the great Polish Pope, what was the first country he visited after he became Pope? Did you know? What was the first country he visited? He didn't visit Poland. No. He visited Mexico because of her. He said, I want to go and visit her. And that was the first place he visited. So important is Our Lady of Guadalupe in each and every one of our lives. Why? Because the word Guadalupe, do you know what the word Guadalupe means? No, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it means the woman who crushes the head of the devil. She crushes the head of the devil. That's Guadalupe. That's why she's got the two horns here, because she crushes the head of the devil. And how does she crush the head of the devil? How does she crush the devil in our life? Well, her hands are folded, so that's prayer, which is what we're doing today. And her knee is bent. You see in this representation? 
her knee is bent. Huh? That's an Aztec symbol. The Aztecs, when they had their knee bent, it meant they were dancing. So joy, huh? which is why this whole today and tomorrow and yesterday, we've been dancing. In fact, they put me up to having a dollar dance with me <laughs> to make money for the church. Okay. So to dance with me, people had to pay 20 and up, of course. <laughs> I'm not that cheap. I won't dance for a dollar. <laughs> so, and then this bow here on her arms, it means she's pregnant. It's an Aztec symbol that she's pregnant. So family, that's why she's pregnant. Joy and prayer. And we crush the head of the devil in our life. And hope. Am I not here? I who am your mother. Mm -hmm. That everything is going to be okay in our life. Every time I look at her, she is the symbol of hope. That it's all okay. God has come back and visited his people. God is always with us. Mm -hmm. It will all be fine. Our mother has come back. Your mama has come back. You've got your mama. You've got your mama with you. And that means it's all going to be fine. And that means we're going to be celebrating big today. So, not just, I encourage you to have, buy one of these Our Ladies of Guadalupe's. Mm. But not just that, we've got tamales. <laughs> and they freeze so well. All day today. So uh, take some home. And we've got all sorts of other things out there for each and every one of you as we celebrate our Mother Mary. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for being here as we continue our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God.